Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. There's only a few days left of the year 2021, so it's time for my first monthly bullet journal setup for the new year. Even saying that feels so weird and I believe I'm not the only one. If you want to see how I set up my first pages in my new Archer and Olive notebook, I will link that video in the cards and in the description below. So let's go and set up my new theme for the month of January. I actually had a poll on Instagram where I asked my followers to vote for my new theme for January and Winter Villages won, so I chose that one. I started off my cover page by first making a loose sketch of camera but made it more detailed here. I took inspiration from many different, mainly European cities. I think some of the reference pictures I looked at were, for example, from Austria, Netherlands and Poland. I think this scene I'm painting here in the cover page is actually from a beautiful Austrian village called Hallstatt. I hope I pronounced that okay, but I did modify it a little bit to make it easier for me and I also didn't want to just fully copy the picture. This is what I tried to do with all of my paintings this month and I think it was easier than I thought, even though I'm not really that comfortable with painting buildings yet. I was actually really scared to start painting this because I didn't know what this was going to become at all. I also wasn't sure about the medium I wanted to use until just before I started filming. I chose watercolors just so I could create some shadows a bit easier and use more light layers because like I said, I'm definitely not on my comfort zone when painting buildings. So I started first by painting the building that is farthest away in the middle. I think this could be a hotel of some sort because of the long balconies. First I just added a really light beige color in the center and added just a little bit darker color on the sides of the building. I made the top level walls darker and painted some darker vertical lines there to make it look like it has some wooden panels. I chose to paint the window frames dark brown, but I would say if you want to save some time, you can absolutely use a fine liner, even a black one. It's also easier to be accurate when using a fine liner instead of a painting brush. I definitely made many wobbly, uneven lines, but I didn't want to make this perfect or spend even more time on these small details. In this painting, I colored the insides of the window frames with a light grey color and some of them I colored yellow to kind of make it look like they had their lights on inside the houses. But again, to save your time, you could absolutely leave them white too. So, like I said earlier, I used watercolors, Windsor and Newton Cutman watercolors to be exact, and I think I only used like six different pans of watercolor, so I think I definitely went with a really limited color palette. I kept the colors same throughout this theme and used, for example, brown and yellow tones for the houses. I think this theme stayed more consistent in colors and style compared to, for example, my last theme, and I think choosing a more limited color palette helped with that. By the way, all of my used products are listed in the description as always, so if there's one or two items you're curious about, definitely check out the caption first. I left the roofs of the houses really light so it would look like there's snow, and also later I went over them with white gouache. I'm using an Archer and Olive notebook this year and it handles watercolors well, but it's definitely harder to blend colors or evenly coat an area with watercolors. You might have seen when I add color to the paper, it has this almost soft looking texture. I don't really know what it's called, but it's definitely something that happens with notebooks that aren't made for watercolors. It's not the nicest effect and I think I might have to go for gouache in my other themes in this notebook. Luckily, gouache is my preferred medium, but I like sometimes experimenting more with watercolors as well. First, I wanted to include some small spruces here in the forefront and overall just paint the sky and make the background for this, but I ended up just painting the houses and forgetting about the background. This cover page took about 4 hours to make, so I wanted to make it as simple as possible in the end. I made this setup just before Christmas and I was in such a hurry to finish these pages before I left town. That's also why it took a bit longer to get this video out. 
I hope you still enjoy watching it even though it's almost January now. I don't usually have many Christmas related tasks, but I still always end up being stressed about something. I really tried to make sure I would finish all my videos a lot earlier, but I'm still super late again. That's how it goes sometimes, I guess. Even though this theme was supposed to be winter villages, I noticed how hard it was to achieve that look with watercolors and without painting the landscape behind the buildings in my paintings. Now I think this just has this cozy and warm winter feel, but my initial idea was to paint full landscape pictures with the houses, but like I said earlier, I decided to go with more simple look and spare some time. If you have more time and want to get even more wintry look, definitely paint for example some snowy mountains in the back. I painted a little spruce on the front of the nearest building along with a black fence and a sign. I thought there could be maybe a little cafe around the corner and that's what the sign is for. Lastly, I added some more details for the roofs and walls, darkened some areas and added some super light color to the ground. I also took my white quash, added a bit of that to the roofs and also took my small detail brush and splattered the quash on the painting a little bit so it looks like there's some falling snow too. And that's pretty much it for the painting. I just peeled off my washi tape and started creating the title for January. This style for lettering is highly inspired by another super talented Politrano YouTuber called Therese T. She actually used the same font for her January setup and I think it looked really beautiful, elegant and easy at the same time so I had to try it here as well. I will definitely link her channel in the description below. I think this font balance is spread out nicely and it doesn't take away from the painting in my opinion. I used a Pigma Micron Inside 02 for all of my headers this month. Next, we are working on my calendar spread where I created this row of different neutral toned apartment buildings in the bottom. I think this spread in particular doesn't look that wintry, but again, it has that comfy and cozy vibe anyway. It's also one of my favorite spreads, if not the favorite spread I made this month. I immediately started working on the painting part of the spread as I usually do. I again sketched these buildings off camera and I first just looked at some pictures with tall buildings like this to get the idea of what I wanted to do. Those pictures were from Amsterdam and Poland and I tried to get that similar vibe here. I also know obviously those buildings have totally different architecture styles and the houses I painted are different styles too, but those pictures gave me some good inspiration and ideas about the roofs and windows for example. So first I started this painting by taking different brown tones and painted the base color for each building first, leaving the window parts white. I wanted to add each color on different sides of the spread so they would be evenly spread out. I wanted to add a bit of contrast so I painted one of them black too. By the way, I know my themes aren't always the easiest to recreate and they take a long time to make, but you could easily switch the paints for markers for example or just simplify them a lot to save some time. Obviously, no bullet journal needs this elaborate decoration so you don't need to add any drawings or paintings in your spreads if you don't want to or have time, but since you're here, maybe you would like to or just like watching others do that. Setting up a cohesive theme for each month helps me to stay interested in journaling and be more creative. 
But throughout the years, I've sometimes had the same problem that I haven't had the motivation to actually use my notebook that much. I often journal in my weekly spreads, but I don't always have the excitement for that each month, but now I feel like it's coming back again. Last I had this excitement to use my notebook in this way was in August when I did my houseplant theme. I just love the spreads and layout I used there, so I try to approach my January setup in the same way for the New Year's sake. I try to make more fun layouts, try to let go of the thought of making everything perfect and just had fun. I think the time restraints kinda slowed me down though, but I really like this whole setup and I'm excited to start using it in less than a week. I made a small brick-like pattern for the orange tone building and I did that for some of my other paintings after this too. It was an easy detail to add whenever I felt like making something look more interesting. I first used my brush again to paint the window frames for these houses but it just took such a long time that I changed my brush for a fine liner and that was a good choice I think. I colored either the window frame or the inside of the window black for each building again to keep it as simple as possible. I didn't want to use my fine liner for coloring in, so at first I just drew the general outline and colored it in later with a thicker black marker. When all the windows were done, I started painting the roofs and all the small details too. I used my white jelly roll pen to cover those spots where I accidentally added some unwanted color and made those white horizontal beams more noticeable. I think adding those small details for the buildings made a huge difference, especially when they were on itself very minimalistic. When the painting portion was done, I started working on the layout itself. I wanted to have this whimsical feel in the spread. My calendar spreads often stay really minimalistic, so I wanted to take the challenge of adding a bit more elements in this one, but in a way that doesn't take way too much time and effort. I again wrote January to the left side of the spread and then outlined the calendar, making it in this more wobbly style, not using a ruler. I love how I've been able to sometimes draw boxes without using a ruler nowadays. It's sometimes very nerve-wracking to draw uneven lines since I love a really polished look on my spreads usually, but trying to make everything almost too perfect is sometimes a bit stressful. This time I also added a little column where I can write the numbers of each week. That's a detail I think I've been missing in my spreads sometimes, so it's good to add now. I did accidentally write the first one wrong in the beginning, but I changed it later. For each day, I painted a small brown colored dot where I drew the date later. I only took three different colors and added them evenly to the calendar using my small detail brush. You could definitely use some markers for this, I sadly just didn't have any good ones that would fit this theme. I also got some pieces of craft paper and glued them to the right side of my calendar. I titled them as notes and my focus this month. The paper I used was from a flower bouquet I bought a long time ago and saved for this exact purpose. Last thing I did was just again splatter some white gouache paint on top of the buildings. Now that this calendar spread is done, let's flip to the next spread where I made my trackers for this month. 
I tried to create a more interesting layout for my tracker since the spread sometimes is the hardest one for me to actually fill in. But let's start again with the paintings first. I tapped the edges of the painting to get those sharp and clean edges. This painting definitely doesn't have that village vibe and instead looks like a bigger city but I again chose the same color scheme and I think it still matches with my theme. I created my mood and habit trackers to the left side of the spread along with the header so I wanted to balance it out with this big and long painting on the right side. I started the painting process again by painting the base colors for each buildings first. Since I just painted a few of these buildings, I wanted to make sure that there was enough contrast and darker colors. If you choose super light tones, it could easily just look really bland, so I would recommend at least adding some darker details if you want to keep the buildings itself light colored. By the way, if my voice sounds a bit weird this time, I'm a little bit sick. I just got a mild flu before Christmas and, well, it's nothing bad but my voice sounds just a tiny bit different than usually. I'm actually now at my friend's house just drinking hot drinks and hanging out with our lovely cats, so everything is fine. We also had the most beautiful Christmas weather with a lots of snow and sunshine. I hope your holidays went well too and you will have a nice upcoming New Year's Eve. I don't have anything special planned, I'm probably just going to be home and watching movies or something. These buildings were a bit tricky to paint because they had these extensions coming from the sides, but I think I got there in the end anyway. Overall, there's a lot of details in this painting, so if one thing doesn't go exactly as planned, you probably can't even see it in the end. I definitely noticed how the perspective was a little bit off in some spots, but I think it's okay, especially considering that I don't really paint buildings that often. One of my clips got corrupted, so we lost some footage of me painting the balconies and window frames, but I just basically took my black watercolor and painted the frame thicker on the left side of the windows and added some lines to the columns. I was using many of these small detail brushes from Arteza in this setup and I think I only used one bigger brush to paint the larger areas in my buildings. So if you're thinking about painting something like this, you should definitely have at least one tiny brush so you're able to paint all the window frames and thin lines there are on these houses. I also use a small notebook under my wrist when painting on the right side of the page because these are some of the first pages in my notebook and I needed that support so I was able to keep my hand more steady. I painted the same brick pattern on the right building. I definitely needed a steady hand for these lines. First, I didn't know what to add to the bottom part of this painting since I really didn't want to work too long on landscapes or other details. I just added some bushes or greenery filled with snow below the buildings by taking a bit of green watercolor and adding it randomly everywhere, leaving some spots white and taking white gouache and adding it on top of that. I painted a metal fence below the greenery adding some white gouache again on top of the upper part of the fence. Lastly, with white, I painted some snow-covered cars in the bottom of the painting. I added some light grey shadows to them with a tiny bit of watercolors, but like I said many times before, I kept this really simple. I took my Pigma Micron and wrote the header again in the left corner. I especially like how this header looks. I think it brings some nice airiness to the spread. I cut these small rectangles from the light colored craft paper and glued them on the page. I wanted to draw my habit trackers here and I liked how this technique made it so much more interesting. I've seen so many beautiful habit tracker pages but I've noticed that it's harder for me to make simple habit trackers still look interesting and fun. I think including craft paper is always a good choice and it's something most of us have laying around the house even if we don't have many different colored markers or a lot of stationery. I don't actually have many stationary supplies at all, so I always have to think how I can elevate my spreads with limited products. I also took my 005 sized Pigma Micron and drew the grid on top of the craft paper pieces where I can then cross off my habits each day. I don't think I've ever included this many habit triggers, but I wasn't able to space them out better if I would've added only 6, so I ended up going with 8 and had to come up with some habits I actually never tracked. 
I made a really simple mood and sleep tracker on the bottom of this page where I will make a chart where I will track how I felt each day and how much I slept. I've been struggling with filling in my mood trackers but I think this is simple enough so I hope this works better for me. This spread turned out really nice and I'm so happy with the painting as well but let's go to the next spread which has been one of my favorite layouts to use in the last months. As always, this memory spread is inspired by Monday Morning Design, whose Instagram account I will link in the description below. I've used this spread for a couple of months now, but I wanted to make it more aesthetically pleasing this time. I made a simple header in the middle of the spread where I wrote memories with the same thin lettering as I've used in my other spreads this month. I also wrote January below that with a more simple font. I made 31 different boxes around the spread. I drew some of the boxes with the scribbly lines, some with 08 Pigma Micron, some with Cocoa Shade Acrylograph, and I also glued in some simple dot grid notebook paper and craft paper some of the boxes. I didn't use a ruler for any of these boxes and I think that gave this spread a fun, whimsical vibe. In this spread I will just draw or write something to the boxes each day and then I can look at this spread later and remember all the fun and not so fun things that happened this month. I also took my warm grey colored Sakura Koi brush pen to draw some simple plaid pattern in a couple of the boxes so there would be more variety. Lastly, I took some of this Mellow Days grid washi and added a tiny piece of that on top of some of those boxes. This was just a simple but fun and therapeutic spread to make and now we will go to the next one. I always include a content planner in my monthly theme so obviously I had to include one for this month as well. I wanted to make a spread that would be the most efficient one and have everything I need. I decided to paint just a small-ish painting on the bottom left corner. This painting definitely fits better with the village theme. I wanted to make this pretty fast so I just took some different brown colors and started painting small houses stacked on top of each other. Since these buildings were smaller this time, I didn't spend a lot of time painting small details. I also painted the houses facing different directions so it wouldn't look so flat. By the way, even though I talked about this notebook not being the best one for watercolors, I didn't get any bleed through in all of my spreads even when I used a lot of water with my paintings. The only thing I noticed when I was painting was obviously the wrinkling I got but the wrinkled spots actually felt really rough and hard whereas my last notebook always had these really soft bendable pages. I don't think it's a huge con or anything but I was just surprised about this when I turned the page. But if you would like to get, for example, a notebook or some pens from Archer and Olive, you can always use my code DINA10 for 10% off while I also get a small commission from them. All of my other discount codes are also listed in the description, so take a look at them if you're interested in buying some stationery. This is one of the most useful spreads for me since I post on different social media platforms a lot every week and I like to track and plan everything ahead and have a clear schedule. This month I decided to do a bigger content calendar in this spread where I can list all of my pictures and videos I would like to upload in January. I decided to again add the week numbers too and have more space for everything so I can add multiple items in each box. Mm -hmm. 
I also glued craft paper pieces to the left side where I can track my followers and list any notes I can't fit anywhere else. I made a big box for tracking my Instagram posts and below the calendar I made a box for to-dos for each week. I've never done something like this but I thought it could be useful so I could list tasks for each week on top of individual days. I drew some of the headers for my boxes with the Archer and Olive Coco acrylograph because this spread just needed some more color. I used the same brown watercolors to paint a dot for each box. I wrote the headers for all of the boxes and the dates on top of those colorful circles with my Muji gel pen in size 05. I hope this spread works for me well and I end up using it a lot. The next spread I made is a super simple one. First, I planned on making a full page painting in the right page as usual, but like I already said many times, I just didn't have that much time anymore, so I made this quote page instead. If you followed me for a longer time, you know I almost never make quote pages in my notebooks, mainly because I find most of them pretty cheesy and not relevant for me. But I wanted to make one here, so I googled and found this one, and I think it resonated well with me and could be a helpful reminder to take with me to the new year. First, before writing the actual quote, I decorated the page around it with different papers and elements. I did the same craft paper I used before and also chose this old book page looking paper I used on my November setup. This is actually just a page I found on Google and printed it myself and just cut it out to smaller pieces. I layered the papers on top of each other in this almost frame looking shape. With my acrylograph pen, I drew these two circle shapes on the bottom right corner and started writing the quote on top. I chose this quote that says, the beginning is the most important part of the work. I feel like for me the hardest part about creating, trying out new things and working is the beginning. Sometimes just starting whatever you're supposed to work on is almost winning by itself and things start to work out easier. I can procrastinate on something for days and when I start working on it, I do it in a couple of hours. I wrote the words the beginning and important with the same lettering style I've used a whole month so far and the words in between with this messy hand lettering style. I made this page really fast but it was fun to try out different style too and not spend hours and hours painting. On the left page I printed some album covers of the songs I've been listening to lately, made some scribbly borders for the albums and also drew a little simple lined border to the whole page with my acrylograph marker. This is also a very minimalistic page with not much going on, but I still always like the style of my playlist pages. They are mostly there for the future me to look at the spread and see what songs I have played nonstop each month. Now we are getting to the last spread I'm creating in this setup and it's my first weekly spread of the month. I made a weekly spread last month using the same layout which is of course inspired by my talented friend whose Instagram account is Dots. I love how the spread looked and it worked so well for me so I decided to include it here as well. I will include her Instagram account in the description, so definitely go check it out. I feel like so many of my spreads have been inspired by other artists, but that's what's so great about this bullet journaling community, seeing so many different spread ideas and layouts. But in the spread, there's one daily box for each day, and for every other box, I again glued the same craft paper. I drew the other boxes with my 08 Pigma Micron and decided to add some of these neutral toned dot stickers on the upper left box. They were actually big rectangle shaped stickers, but I cut the circles from that. I wrote the days of the week for each box with a big font size. I drew a small dot with my acrylograph in the right side of the boxes and wrote the dates on top. Finally, it's the time to start working on the small painting. This definitely was the least time consuming painting and I think it turned out super cute and made this page look so nice. So I painted this little city view with the different brown colored buildings on both sides of the road along with a tall tower in the back. First I again painted the base colors with the messy style without trying to make it perfect at all. 
I added some small details to the houses, drew some lines for the walls and darkened some areas below the roofs and painted the window frames. I've liked making these more simple weekly spreads lately. I like that I don't have to spend too much time on them and instead can focus on the other spreads more. Also, even though this painting was super simple and fast to make, I think it still looks really cute and makes this spread look more interesting. I painted this archway in the back and this whole painting just reminds me of some places I've traveled to and makes me feel like wanting to go somewhere beautiful like this. I again added some white quash for the roofs and splattered white paint all over the painting. First I thought I would leave the spread like this, but I decided to add a little piece of the old book page to the left bottom corner of the spread and I think even though the words are upside down, <laughs> this kind of tied the spread together perfectly. But now the spread and my whole setup for January is all done. I really hope you enjoyed this video and seeing me create these cozy paintings. We are now just quickly going to flip through the pages I made here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up and leave your favorite wintry emoji in the comments below so I know you watch until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!